<laughs> what we're asking is uh, whoever would like to speak to come down here in front so they make uh, fair to the public and fair to the board so that the board can understand and the public can hear uh, in the, in the we'll be setting a time limit of three minutes so we're opening up the public <coughs> Can I ask a question about the three-minute time period? Now, last time... Come down, come down front and state your name. What? Come down front here and state your name. Sid? Yeah, great, great uh, okay. It's funny. Uh, Leonard Perikoski, I have a question about the three-minute um, limitation. Last time on the show, I was experiencing <coughs> watching this be uh, in post. Do we now have something better than some of the wrist blocks to do this? Is there a timer? And does the person have a, a warning that their three minutes are just about up? Well, we, we stole a cooking thing, I believe. Okay. <laughs> that, that's yeah. all I want to know. You know so so it's fair. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then you'll let them know like uh, 30 seconds or so. Anybody would like to just yeah. Yeah. My name is Angelo Trapolo. Uh, I'm down in Rock 41. Do we, uh, not everybody here has a computer. I have one, but I have not into the internet. And we really don't get much information about what's going on with this gas thing. Maybe you can give us some input, you know, what's going on, you know, whatever, and you give us a little something. You might have been in touch with people that know what's going on. I don't think that's a question that I can answer here at this meeting. But, um, if you would like to contact me at some point, um, I'd try to help you. Well, it's in the talk, actually. You know, it, um, on the hill. If you have a computer, I'm sure there's a lot of information on the computer. I'm not a computer person. <laughs> I told you they can get us a little, you know, put on what's going on in the moratorium business. Well, as far as pipeline, I can give you a little information as far as pipeline. Well, Bluestone has is, is completed uh, their pipeline. There, there is gas going through their pipeline. They have not completed the resurrection and the roads. They still have got roads to take it up. And the town is right on top of that. There is another pipeline that is looking to come through the town of Sanford, that's Constitution. Mm -hmm. that's, um, that's, what you say. that's really all I can tell you. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. <coughs> Thank you. I have a question about the Constitution pipeline. I'm Barbara Lester. Um, about five weeks ago, in our paper was a short article about it, but it said that the United States Army Board of Engineers was putting a halt or requesting, strongly requesting a halt to the Constitution Pipeline path that was discussed just before that at a public meeting here in Deposit. And I wondered if anyone here could answer any questions about what's happening with the Constitution Pipeline path because they want to make a change. According to this article, the Corps of Engineers is disturbed about how many people did not allow the surveyors on the property. Only 61% allow people on the property to do the survey, and there's streams involved and bodies of water that the permits have to be given by the United States Corps of Engineers, Army Corps of Engineers, for the streams. And then they don't like what they're seeing, and they can't get permits when they can't get on the land to survey. And I was hoping one of you could give us some updates on that. It's been it's in about five local papers. This is the only on the Star article. It's going to be detail here. Did you know anything about it? I know constitutional too, but I don't know anything about what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. It was five weeks ago. I would think something would have gone by your desk since then. I really don't. I really don't know. Okay. 
Dude, can I ask you one more question? If somebody approaches you about a pipeline that they intend to put on your property, which I, I went through, and I had to tell this gentleman that uh, I cannot give you permission to go on my land because I'm in contract with XCO Energy. You have to contact these people and get their permission because the property is leased. Am I liable with XCO if I allow them to go on my property and survey? I don't think you are, but uh, I really can't answer that question. I have to see a lawyer to find out? Michael Zanti. Um, I have a couple of questions stemming from the wear and tear on roads, which I'm sure you're all well aware of. One, can we be sure that the public is not going to have to bear the cost for the repairs and the rebuilding of some of these roads due to the Bluestone Pipeline <coughs> activities? And then my the follow-up question would then be, based on what is going on with the Bluestone Pipeline, would the board be considering raising its bond requirements to that of more the prevailing rate that the surrounding communities have for activities of that sort going forward in the future? And I just appreciate any questions. Well, I think you have the first one is that uh, I believe the town is on top of the reconstruction of the Road, everything is looking good. That's why we're having meetings uh, on a weekly basis with these people to be uh, keep updated. I want to know what they're doing, day to day uh, activities, what's happening with the roads. Um, in regards to, we're having a meeting on Thursday to talk about the final reconstruction of the roads here itself because, as I told you guys before, uh, I don't feel as taxpayers we have to absorb the cost. So, since they made the damage, they need to pay for the road. Uh, they do have a million dollar bond in place here with the town right now. Uh, it's unfortunate right now there's more than a million dollars worth of damage out there. That's why we have them here on a daily occurrence doing temporary work so we can hopefully get that under the million dollars so we at least have some kind of weather should we speak. In the future, we're going to look at a higher amount as far as the bond. Um, I believe the county is. In fact, you're going to a meeting tomorrow. Tomorrow, sure. Yes. Yeah. And the original road document that uh, the county had, they only had five hundred thousand. Uh, I believe Windsor had two million. And with the Constitution, I'm sure we're going to be looking at a higher amount. That's what we need to sit with the attorney with. Thank you for your answer. My name is Gail Musante, and I have a question. You were saying the uh, Bluestone has gas uh, flowing in it, right? The Bluestone pipeline, you said? Thanks. So it's up and running. The connection with the Millennium Pipeline, when I was in the Bluestone office, they had a map up, and on the map key, it said there was a compressor station connecting the Bluestone to the Millennium. And I haven't heard anything about, I thought there was going to be a pressure station where we'd have a public hearing or something. If they're flowing up, what's, um, what is that connection? What, how big is it? Um, what's the nature of it? I believe there's a decompression. Uh, the pressure is high enough that's coming from Pennsylvania that they do not need the compressor. They have to be and that's all I can basically tell you. It's called you can, you know it says the pressure, pressure. The pressure is higher in the Bluestone line than what the Millennium line. I believe the Millennium is about 1,500 pounds, and I believe the pressure is higher coming to the Bluestone line, and so they have to decompress it. Nobody's going to put it in the lines, but I 
I don't understand a lot of that. But I think a lot of the people in the town would really like to know what the nature of that connection is because we've heard a lot about compressor stations with emissions and a lot of dangerous um, health risks involved with that. Um, so it would be really nice. When I talked to them Bluestone, they referred me to a computer um, mm -hmm. website that gave me no information whatsoever. And I really think that um, they owe it to the town to tell us exactly what's going on up there. Just because it's up in the hills doesn't mean it really doesn't affect us. If it's affecting our air and it's, um, you know, has potential risk, we really need to know about it. I, I can't really help you on that. But, uh, all I know is that they don't have the compressor at present time. So there's no compressors up there that's, that's uh, running. They're, they're not going to install probably will be in the future. If the pressure goes down in the line, then they'll have to put the pressure down. But there's none now. Will we have any say in that as a community? No. So it's already too late once the pipeline is going through to have a hearing on the compressor station. Well, the state could be handling that. Mm -hmm. So we, if we have concerns about that with the Constitution, that needs to be addressed before. There won't be a compressor station with a constitution. They're going to hook into a compressor station that already exists, and that's going to be up towards Albany. So there won't be a compressor station with a constitution. Would there be any kind of hearing if the Bluestone decides to put a compressor station in? I don't believe so. I can't really answer that question. Is there someone who could? Excuse me? Is there someone who could answer that? Could we have the Bluestone people come and talk to us at the town meeting or something? We can look into that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not saying it was. My name is Carl Andreessen. Yeah, I just came back from Ohio, Pennsylvania border, and there was uh, a lot of activity out there, pipeline footing, and there was gas running, there was uh, pumping stations going in. And we drove around quite extensively, and some of these lines are going next to beautiful homes and things like that. And actually, I didn't see one for or one against fracking, either, either way, sign out there at all. I mean, the place was just booming. And another thing, in Canada, the natural gas industry <coughs> is scheduled to have a trillion dollar income from it, trading 130,000 jobs, moving so that every province is going to have some kind of income from it. And uh, I think it's a win-win situation for our area to have natural gas benefits. And the landowners, I went to a meeting the other night, it's called Police New York, and I tried to say something, but right away they grabbed the microwave from me after I made a couple comments. So it depends on who controls the mic, I guess. But anyway, I think the benefits for the landowners and the benefits for the community, plus the benefits for the tax situation, is going to be such a plus. You know, if these other states can do it, certainly New York can. Thank you. Yes? My name is Glenn Keegan. I wasn't going to speak tonight, but thank you, Carl. I uh, spent a lot of time and put considerable effort in determining the monies lost in this township over the last four years. Primarily, our problem is the DRBC with their ban on drilling, not the New York State moratorium. I can assure you, and I will privately explain this to you in detail, we, in four years, have lost $70 million in royalty income. And that's based on the XTO 15%, an average wellhead of 7 million cubic feet a day. 
That, Carl, is how much money is being lost in this township. It's a lot of money. <coughs> if you need further explanation, I'd be happy to give it to you. Can I say one more thing? Um, I want to give you some perspective on what a trillion dollars is. In seconds, it's 32 years for a billion. A trillion is a thousand billion. So in seconds, it takes 32,000 years to have a trillion. I mean, that, that's what Canada faces. And, and New York has uh, studied these things for what, five, six years now? And I don't know how long it takes to study something, but it seems like it's a little bit absurd. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, is there any way we could send a letter to Mr. Como and tell him, you know, hey, uh, Pennsylvania is breaking the office here and leave it up to something. Mr. Como, how about it? <laughs> <laughs> you can do it, get off the top. He knows that I'll give you his phone number. I can send a letter. Yeah, Earnhardt, what do you need? Anybody else would like to? Can you see any of the posts? Billy, I'd just like to say something real quick, if you don't mind. I'm Sandra Davis. Um, I want to back up on what Carl said a little. I have two kids and another one on the way, and I have to send my husband to Syracuse to work every day. Okay, I'm taking away from his kids to make the same money he made in Binghamton, but yet we're going to shut this down because our air is going to go bad and, and it's going to con contaminate our aquifers. Come on, there has not been an aquifer contamination yet. We all know it. Let's do our research, get our facts straight. Anyways, I just wanted to say that real quick. It's, it's a big struggle. It's tough. My husband doesn't get home until 6 at night. He leaves at 4 in the morning. He doesn't see our kids. It's not fair to them. We, we need to think about our children and their future here. I want my kids to stay here when they grow up. I want to pass down my land to them. I don't want to have to lose my land to taxes and move away because, you know, because we didn't accept what the earth gave us. So, thank you. Okay, thank you. Come on. Yeah, we're gonna slide it. Um. But does anybody know anyone who's running the water trucks for Bluestone? I'll take that as a no. Um, the DEC is sending out a spec an inspector, I believe, in the next three days. And I've heard reports of the water trucks going to various areas and returning. And this is when they're doing the drilling under the highway. Could we send somebody from the town during that inspection? Because, you know, it's private property. And either way, we're going to either certify that they were all on the up and up and there was no issue, or maybe we might certify something else. That if we take a sample, we might find that when they park their truck behind the trees, that's, they're doing something. Would you allow that? If the EC would allow it, would you grant somebody from the town to be there? During the inspection, the town, the town, that, that's uh, your this next meeting. There is there's going to be a inspector, correct? Right? Well, that's going to be a New York State engineer. Uh, the question I think he's asking for is if we get somebody here, or can the town say it's okay? Which I really feel that yeah, ought to be well, asked to an attorney uh, for that. Answer because I, you know, we just can't come onto your land without, you know, right. whether you want us there or not. I just can't well, come to your land. I understand, but try to clear that because either way, it's got to either give a certification that they're on the up and up or a right. Well, if you've got a New York State DEC, else, if you got a New York State DEC officer there, I think. No, I don't trust so, him. I understand that. You know what I'm saying? I guarantee you. Do we trust you? But that, that's not my place to say. But Don't trust me. You go. I'll, I'll let you. I think an attorney ought to be asked to answer that question. Because okay. Uh, the other thing I'd like to tell you is that the DEC, 
I'll put you in contact with the people at the DEC that will allow a hearing for the compressor station, because that's fully within our rights. I've already talked to the DEC about that. And for the people downwind who are, you know, impacted by that, in Windsor there are a lot of people who are impacted, and they formed the group Crow as a result of what they felt their impact was. And um, so uh, please, uh, I'll, I guess I'll email the clerk and I express, I, I'm hoping you'll give a positive response if I show you the means of providing a hearing for us. Any information that you want, you can get this way. Okay, finally, um, I, I'll sit down after this, but I, I want to have the response from all five board members, just that, were they contacted, who were they contacted by when the resolution was passed a year ago? And I believe you're asked to sign something that was, uh, you know, as 20 towns in favor of, you know, let's get gas drilling going. I, uh, to be specific, I don't want to be, the, the specific question is, who provided that resolution? Because I know it's identical verbatim. It's a copy with fill-ins from Afton, from Conklin. I can name about 20 towns where it's almost a copy. And I'd like to know who they, provided that. you probably know more than what the board knows. No, I absolutely know nothing. If somebody approached you, you know who it is. That's why I'm asking. And if each board member could say that they just don't know who provided that draft, Say it. I'm, I'm done. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Anybody up? Nobody? No public session is closed.